Hi everyone, hi year 10. Um, so we're nearly there, I'm on checking out my history now. Um, this is a really hard poem to read. Um, I find it really hard to get that dialect and, and that accent, but I think he's done that on purpose. I think he wants us to feel um, separated, displaced. He wants us to feel like how um, he feels. Um, so I will read it to you, um, and I'm sorry if I read it badly, but you can go and find um, uh, John Agard reading this, and you can find his version. He almost sings it. Um, we watched it in school and so it's where they he's in the school and he's running around and he's singing and he's sort of talking about his education so i'll read it to you all right and then i'll give you um i think i've got six tasks for you okay checking out my history dem tell me dem tell me what dem want to tell me bandage up my eye with my own history blind me to my own identity dem tell me about 1066 and all that dem tell me about dick whittington and he cat but tucson louverture no dem never tell me about that Toussaint, a slave, with vision, lick back Napoleon, Battalion and First Republic, born Toussaint de Thorn of the French, Toussaint de Beacon of the Haitian Revolution. Then tell me about the man who discovered a balloon, and a cow who jump over the moon. Then tell me about the dish run away with a spoon, but then never tell me about Nanny de Maroon. Nanny, sea far woman of mountain dream, fire woman struggle, hopeful stream of freedom river. Dem tell me about Lord Nelson and Waterloo, but dem never tell me about Shaka de Great Zulu. Dem tell me about Columbus and 1492, but what happened to the Caribs and the Arawaks too? Dem tell me about Florence Nightingale and She Lamp, and how Robin Hood used to camp. Dem tell me about Old King Cole was a merry old soul, but dem never tell me about Mary Seacole. From Jamaica, she travelled far to the Crimean War. She volunteered to go, and even when the British said no, she still braved the Russian snow. A healing star among the wounded, a yellow sunrise to the dying. Dem tell me, dem tell me what dem want to tell me. But now I checking out my own history. I carving out my own identity. So, sorry about that, really. Terrible. Okay, so um, here are your tasks. Um, so I want you to think about the structure as well, just the layout of it. So do get it out and do look at it because it, how it's on the page is really, really important. It's done it on purpose. Um, so task one, I want you to think about his use of dialect. The thing that made it really hard for me to read, um, his use of dialect, his use of colloquialisms, and um, that informal, but his identity language, okay? So how does it um, help to represent his ownership of his cultural identity? How does it help to separate us as readers um, and almost give his people a sense of ownership of that poem? Um, and maybe he felt outside of all the poetry he was taught at school because it was written in our dialect, okay? So maybe he's doing something by giving us that dialect. Number two, think about the anger in this poem. There's an angry tone, um, the use of dem and us and and them tell me, them tell me. So that kind of separation that he creates with his pronouns. So have a think about the ang anger in the voice there and where it's represented and what meaning it has. Number three, I want you to think about some imagery. Okay, the imagery that's created in this poem. Um, there are lots of different lexical fields that happen in different parts of the poem and they're, they're on purpose. There's a lexical field and imagery of wounding, of damage, of bandages and blinding and carving and um, Lots of things that are quite aggressive and violent. And alongside that, you get light and you get empowerment and you get freedom and you get sea women and you get fire women. You get all these um, powerful, powerful images of strength and um, determination. Um, so have a look at the imagery and the lexical fields and see how they give us kind of a separation. Um, number four, I want you to think about some sarcasm. So he's like quite sarcastic about what he did learn at school. He talks about, oh, they taught me about the cow that jumped over the moon. What, how important is that? He, he talks about Robin Hood and, and all these things that actually to him meant nothing. Um, so think about his sarcastic tone when he's talking about um, the school that taught him history and taught him everything that he knew in his education. Um, and compare that sarcasm to the pride that comes when he's talking about the historical black figures, the figures that actually give him a sense of identity that he was never taught about. Um, because we live in a white-centric world and he went to a, 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 a Europe sent a white-centric school who taught him about white history and there's him sitting there think, feeling like his identity was of no value because he got given no history or no value anyway okay 
So sarcasm about the British education system and then pride about the things he wanted to learn. Um, always think about, la so number five, think about the last line. Okay, last lines are always really important in poems. Okay, first and last lines and usually a vulture in the middle somewhere is a shift. Um, but the last line in this poem is quite um, important because it's about taking back control. So I want you to analyse that. But now, the but is quite important, that um, conjunction there. But now I, I check out my own history. I carve out my identity. Okay, that kind of sense of determination that comes from that language there. And number six, I want you to think about the layout. So make sure you've got this in front of you because it's a very visual poem. Um, think about the layout, the structure, the rhyme scheme, the rhythm, the pace, how it changes from fast and 